change all these resistors, I mean all these capacitors, you saw how many there were in that zenith. It looks like quite a job, but there are some old Indian tricks to make this fairly reasonable. And I have to apologize for the typo on your copy of this slide. Does anybody remember buying replacement capacitors from Sprague? Little box says, don't be big, ask for Sprague. That's five caps in it. Also, I'll pass these around. I hope they come back. This box has this little envelope in it containing little wire spirals that are coated with solder and rosin. And so the way you replace the cap is you just go into the set. You don't mess around with these solder joints down here. You just say clip, clip, throw him away. You do this one cap at a time. You don't want to have them all cut loose and try to figure out which end is which. The other thing you want to pay attention to is the band on the end of the capacitor is the outside foil. That will typically be grounded. In some places it doesn't matter. In reality, it probably doesn't matter anyhow. But a properly assembled radio has the outside foil on the caps grounded. So you put your new capacitors in the same way with the band on the ground end. Yes, sir. Many of the new mylars don't have a band. They're not marked. Oh, well. So much for tradition. OK. But we don't have the quick connectors from, from Sprague. So what do we do now? You find yourself a machinist tool called the pin vipes. Better hardware stores have these things. They're designed to hold a pin or something small, like a, a drill bit. These are real nice for drilling fine holes and things where you just do it with your fingers. But you take your drill bit, maybe a little bigger than 30 seconds an inch, you turn it around the other way, so you have a smooth pin sticking out of it. <clears throat> Take your new capacitor, and uh, after a while you'll figure out how much to cut off the ends of it. Now the pin vise has a collet on it, which is a four-piece thing that squeezes down around the drill bit. You catch the end of the component lead in the collet, and you just twist yourself Detail. You don't make it tight, you leave open space in it so the solder will flow in. If you're real compulsive, cut that little straight piece off it. Yeah, it could be PVCs. 
PCBs we did back in the day. Do you know who invented PCBs? Do you know the name Reginald Fessenden? Fessenden? Yes. He worked for he worked for Edison. He invented the, the chlorinated um, pylon oils to fill transformers. But the guy was with the chemist by by training. Don't know. Well, that was the rest of that story. I think I just showed it to you. The other numerous components that cause problems with resistors. However, the resistor problem is, is not near so epidemic as the capacitor problem. Some radios want good resistors, some will have tired resistors. The resistance value values usually increase. Find yourself a 470K resistor and stick your own meter across it. Don't be worried about taking it out of the circuit. If it reads a mega and a half, you've got a problem. <laughs> and then you want to go in and replace all of those guys in the set. Uh, the higher values are affected by the lower values. <clears throat> Spot check a couple of the set. Remember that most of these resistors are plus or minus 20% in the first place. So don't expect them to be real accurate. But when the 100K resistor gets to be 160, 180K, get it out of there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The Radio Shack half waters work just fine. Did you say don't connect, disconnect the resistor? Well, you can, but in many cases you don't have to worry about it. They're, they're almost always going to get higher in resistance. If it reads lower in resistance, well, then you can say, well, there's other circuitry that's shorting around it. You know, if, if, if you need to be accurate, then you cut one, one end. But basically, they're going to increase. So, like I say, you go to that 470K resistor, and it's down on A, you know you're in trouble. And up with the tight ones, so that's it. Just a few more details. I like to pull all the tubes out, test them, clean the tubes up. You're going to wipe the numbers off a lot of it and have your scribe ready to transfer the numbers to the base. Um, look over the line cord. A lot of them are really funky to replace them. If, if things like the dial cord look like they're not going to last, fix it now. Because you can go into these sets and fix them and they'll stay fixed for, for quite some time.